Hey, my name's Chloe from Go Chloe Pilates and this is Good Moves with Well and Good. Today, I'm gonna to take you through a Pilates for running workout. So if you are a runner, Pilates can be so beneficial for you, not only for your speed and for your running technique, but also to help reduce your risk of injury when you are running. So this is a great workout to do on your non-running days or you can do it before a run to get the, all the right muscles firing. Let's do it. We're gonna start with some side-lying glute exercises. So come on down onto your side, lay yourself all the way down. I'm gonna use my arm as like a little pillow. And a good thing to do here is to line yourself up with the middle or the back of your mat. So your head is there, your hips are there. Bend your knees and slide your feet back in line with the back or the middle of your mat as well. So you're like all in one long line. Top hand can come onto your hip. Think about this top hip sort of lengthening away from you slightly. So you feel the lower waist or lower rib cage just gently get a little lighter onto the mat beneath you. Squeeze your heels together and then just lift and lower this top knee. This is called a clam. It's like one of the all time great Pilates exercises in my opinion. <laughs> but so important for running because it helps to build out your side glute strength called your gluteus medius and your gluteus minimus and also some of the back fibers of your gluteus maximus, i.e. your butt. And that really helps with that landing and push off as you are running. Super important. Who doesn't want strong glutes, right? Now, as you lift and lower that top knee, think about the pelvis staying stacked. So that means you wanna almost roll the top hip forward slightly and this hand on the hip can like police and just tell you what's happening to that top hip. And if you feel like you're rolling back, just rock it forward a little bit more so that you know. All right, keep it going. We'll go for three more like this and two. And one, all right, drop the knee down and now lift both of your feet up. Now keep that lower waist still, gently drawing away from the mat beneath you. And we're gonna do the same thing from here. So you can either do this like so, with the feet coming apart, or if it feels good to sort of connect the soles of the feet, you can also do that. As long as your heels are connected, that's the most important part. And see if you can like pinch your heels together even further, like you're getting this active squeeze through your heels. And what you should feel is this work in that glute, in that booty, it's working. That's it, keep it going nice and smooth. Breathing out to lift the leg, breathing in to slowly lower it down. <sighs> Great, keep it going. See if you can find also a connection through your core muscles here. I know there's lots to think about, but think about the rib cage drawing down, the belly button hugging in slightly. <sighs> That's it. Hopefully by now you're feeling some heat build in that glute muscle, that's what we want. When this starts to get easy, which I don't think it ever really does, but if you want a bit more resistance, you can also do this with a resistance band around your knees, like one of those booty bands. Great way to add a little bit of spice. <laughs> We're here for another three and two. All right, on the next one, lift all the way up, hold it up there. We go halfway down with the knee, all the way up. Halfway down, all the way up. Can you squeeze your heels together a little bit tighter? <sighs> That's it, lower and lift, lower and lift. Good, relax that top shoulder, relax the head a little bit more, relax the muscles around your face. We're just chilling out, doing some clams. Keep it going. We're here for six and five and four. Last three, last two, last one. Good, drop the knee, drop the foot. All right, give it a little punch out a little tap and we are gonna come straight over to the other side, let's do it. Feet come on over, lay yourself on down. You can grab a pillow or just use your arm, make sure you're in one long line. So head, neck, shoulders, hips and feet, all back in one long line, hand onto the hip, lengthen the hip away from you. That's it, pelvis is stacked and then we go up and down, let's do it. Heels together, breathing out to lift the knee, breathing in to lower. Lift and lower. Good, so for this first variation, it might not feel like you get as much range of motion, as much movement, as much lift of the knee, but that's okay. That's totally normal. You'll still feel the work in those glutes. Good, strong glutes help as well with the alignment of our knees. So this side glute muscle is actually what impacts whether or not your knee rolls in often 
also impacted by our feet, but we'll get to that soon, <laughs> later in the class. But really important to have strong glutes. Good, keep it going. If you're not feeling anything in that glute, maybe think about this sort of drawing in sensation. Imagine your thigh is suctioning up and into the hip as you lift it. And sometimes you even need to like give your butt a little poke to be like, hey, muscles, wake up. Sometimes they don't like to activate as well. It happens sometimes. If you spend a lot of time sitting or if you have really tight hip flexors, it can sometimes be hard for those muscles to switch on but we're training them to wake up and help us with our running form. <sighs> Keep it going. Good, we'll go here for another four and three and two. All right, and one, drop the knee down, lift the feet up. Keep that top hip lengthening away still, so lower waist still lifted away from the mat and now we lift and lower from here making sure the heels are squeezing together. So actively pinch the heels together. Notice the difference. When it's just sort of relaxing, you don't feel it as much. And as soon as you squeeze those heels together, you just get even more work, even more fire, even more firing and activation in that top glute. Whew. I can feel it. Good, smooth it out. Now notice what's happening at the pelvis. Make sure your pelvis is staying stacked so we're not rocking back or forward. <sighs> Keep it going. Feels so good, a clam. That's why I love a clam. It always feels so good. <laughs> right? <sighs> Keep it up. We are gonna be here still for another five and four and three and two last one lift it up hold it up we go halfway down with the knee and all the way up halfway down all the way up a little lower and lift lower and lift here's where the burn really happens i know think about that suctioning in feeling still thigh pulling in towards the hip smooth out that motion smooth out that movement we're here for six and five, four, and three, and two. Last one, lift it up, drop it down, drop the feet. All right, nice job. Rolling onto your back now. So bring yourself over. Feet are gonna be flat, hands down by your sides, about hip width distance apart with your feet. Press through both of your feet and lift your hips. This is called a bridge. We're gonna lower and we're gonna lift in one smooth movement. Breathe out to lift the hips up, breathe in to lower. Now, this is sort of variation one, part one really. I want you to think about even weight bearing through both of your feet. I want you to think about pressing through your heels, pressing through your toes, the inner edges of the feet, the outer edges of the feet, they're all pressing down. Now we've just got the side glute, the side butt working with our clams, but now we're gonna work a little bit more into the backs of the hips. So gluteus maximus, your biggest butt muscle, most powerful butt muscle, and also your hamstrings, the backs of the thighs. So also super important for that push-up phase and to give you more power on your push-up phase in your running. Good, all right, little bit of work coming into it, but we're gonna build onto this, keep it going for another five, and four, and three, and two, all right, last one, lift it up, hold it up there, scoop the tailbone under a little bit, so try not to arch through the low back, tuck it under, good, driving down through the feet. Now just feel that for a moment. What you're gonna do is shift the weight now into your left foot. Now really press into the left foot and feel more work shift onto that left side. Take your hands to the fronts of your pelvis, the fronts of your hips, and feel how they're even. One side isn't dipping down more than the other and we're gonna try and keep that there. Now pressing through the left foot, you're gonna float your right leg into a tabletop position. Now what wants to happen is the right hip wants to dip down but we're not gonna let it lift it up a little higher and then place that right foot back down without making any sound at all. And again, right leg floats to tabletop and then it comes back down. No movement, breathe out. <sighs> Stabilize that pelvis, breathe into lower. Now, if you want more of a challenge here, arms can lift up, straight up above your shoulders. 
That's it. If you want more support, elbows down into the mat beneath you. But I think a great option is to keep the hands on the hips, feeling for any motion, any tilting of the pelvis from side to side. And lower, keep it going for two. One more, lift it up, hold it. Can you lift that right side a little higher? That's it, we're gonna drop the hips halfway down. We're gonna lift all the way up. They drop down together, they lift up together. Lower, lift. Can you lift that right hip a little higher? Keep those hips square. Lower and lift as one. Keep it going for another four and three and two. Last one, lift it up, drop the right foot down, drop the hips all the way down. We're gonna come into a little stretch. Take that left ankle, cross it over the right thigh, push the left knee wide, either stay there or take your hands to the back of the right leg and pull it into your chest. This is a great stretch for now. Also a great stretch to add into like your post run stretching routine. If you have one, if you don't, you probably should, and this can be the start of it. <laughs> Pull it in a little close, then give that leg a good stretch. It needs it. One more breath here. And out, let it go. Let's come to the other side. Feet flat again, elbows bent. Let's have the fingers up to start. Lift the hips, find that lifted position. Scoop the tailbone under, place your hands on the fronts of your pelvis, fronts of your hips, that's it. Pressing down now through the right foot, ground into that right foot, all the different parts of it, float your left leg to tabletop. What's happened to that left hip? Pick it up a little bit higher, make sure the pelvis is level and then place the left foot straight back down. So we breathe out, we lift it with control, we breathe in and we lower. Notice if one side feels harder than the other. It often does, and it's really interesting to learn about these asymmetries that exist in our bodies. Helps us build more body awareness and more of this connection into our bodies and what we need. We are all different. That's it. Good, if you want more of a challenge, raise those arms, reach those fingers high. Make sure the head is fully relaxed down. Scoop that tailbone under. Place it down, that's it. Breathe out to lift, in to lower. Keep it going. We are here for four. We're here for three. We're here for two. Last one, we lift it up. We hold it there, make sure the hips are level. We drop the hips together halfway down. They lift all the way up. Halfway down, all the way up. Don't drop that left hip. Can you lift it a little bit higher? <sighs> smooth it out, smooth it out. No jolting of the hips, make it smooth. <sighs> Keep it going. We are here for four and three <sighs> and two. Last one, lift it up, place that left foot down, drop the hips all the way down, straight into a stretch. Right ankle over the left thigh, push the right knee away from you. Whew. And then maybe take the hands to the back of the left leg, pull the shape into the chest. Tailbone heavy onto the mat, so a little arch of the low back as you pull the whole shape in towards your chest. Whew. Good, holding that there. Pull it in a little closer if you can. Take one more deep breath in. And out, let it go. All right, uncross the legs. We're gonna come into some core work with a bit of rotation, everything we need for a good run. Hands behind your head, interlace your fingers. Curl the head and the chest up. One by one, float the legs into tabletop from here. We're gonna to twist to the left, and as we do, the right leg is gonna extend away from the body. Come to the center, but stay in that curl up, and then slowly twist it over to the other side. Twisting to the right, left leg extends. Come to the center, pull it back in. So we breathe out. <sighs> breathe into center. Breathe out to twist. Breathe in center. So as you twist to the left, think about your left elbow pulling behind you, your right elbow reaching towards the thigh. <sighs> Twisting as much as you can through that upper body. Good rotational mobility, good movement and flexibility in that upper back is also a really important part of running. <sighs> Up and across, that's it. 
nice and slow. The lower the leg goes, the more challenging it's gonna be. So if you wanna dip it down lower towards the mat, go for it. We are gonna do the same thing, but now we're just gonna switch from side to side, speeding it up just a little bit. So we switch, we switch, we switch, we switch. Keep it going. Breath out. On each twist, little breath in as you come through the center. Keep it up. Twist a little more. Can you lift the shoulders a little bit higher up off the mat? We're still here. <laughs> We're here for eight, seven, for six, five, last four, three, two, and one. Drop it all the way down. Open your arms wide and just let your knees rock from left to right. <sighs> nice, pull the legs into the chest. Rock yourself all the way up. And we're gonna come up into standing for our last exercise. So bring yourself all the way up. Our last exercise is a calf raise. So working through our calves, probably I'd say the most important exercise to do if you are running or if you're increasing your, your running, standing up, feet about hip width distance apart. Take your hands to your hips. Look down at your feet to start. Make sure they're both pointing forward. Roll your shoulders back and then all you're gonna do is lift your heels, <laughs> roll up onto your toes, testing my balance, and then come back down onto your heels. Lift and lower. Now, that's the whole movement, but there are lots of things to think about here. I want you to have even weight through all of your toes. That means we need to press a little bit more weight or just bring a little bit more att attention into our big toes. Naturally, most of us wanna roll out to the outer edges of the feet, so see if you can bring, bring some of that energy in a little bit more. And then as you lift and lower, think about going straight up. Often we tend to sort of push our hips forward as we lift. Get some engagement through those core muscles. Go straight up. Now, as you build this, we build our calf strength. You might wanna progress this into a single leg where you literally stand on one leg and you lift and lower, but for today, We'll stay on two. <laughs> Good, up and down. Keep the knees fully extended. <sighs> Good, now we're gonna start to speed it up a little bit. Keep those knees straight, still pressing a lot into those big toes. We go up, down, up, down, up, down. <sighs> Good, keep it going, keep it going. You might feel some work building in the calves, maybe even into the backs of the legs a little bit higher, like up into the hamstrings, sometimes into the bottom of the glutes. And now we're gonna really speed it up. Keep it going, keep it going up and down, up and down. We are here as fast as you can for 10, nine, eight, seven, keep it going, six, five, last four, three, last two, and one, <laughs> drop it all the way down. Give it a little shake out. And now you're all ready for your run. Thank you so much for joining me for this workout. My name is Chloe from Go Chloe Pilates. Make sure you subscribe to Well and Good for more of these videos. And I'll see you soon.